Tabor Angles and Drafts. That is what we're going to talk about today. Hey everyone, welcome to season two of these Fusion 360 videos. Well, <laughs> it's not a live stream. You can find the recording for all of those on a playlist here on the channel. 198 of those. This, this is an attempt to answer your questions. So, down in the description area of this video, you'll find my email address, lars.christensen at autodesk.com. Send me any future topics you would like to see, and I will do my best to answer those via these videos. If you are into live streams, my colleague and good friend, Brad Tallis, you will also find the link to his channel down in the description area. He has started a live stream series, and uh, quite frankly, Brad is better looking than me and much better with Fusion 360 than I am, so definitely go and check out Brad's channel. So, today's topic is taper angles and drafts. So, at some point, you have a model and you need to uh, add an angle to some of the faces, and this can be a little bit confusing if you are new to Fusion 360. Now, Today, I'm going to give you five tools that you can utilize to attack this. There's many ways to do it, and for any of you cadenas out there, if you have better ways, add them uh, down in the comments area of these videos. But five ways, let's jump into Fusion 360 and attack that. So let's just start from scratch. Open a sketch here on the face. I'm going to hit my S key and find my center rectangle. Let's do this 400 by 400. Get a nice rectangle like this. And just to add a little bit more flair to this, I'm going to do a two point rectangle and just draw something up that is 100 by 100. Now, I don't many times do this where I'm, I'm bringing one triangle outside the other one. Then I can go down and do something like midpoint from here to here and it will place that midpoint on that triangle right there. All right, good with this. I am going to uh, stop the sketch and uh, go ahead and just extrude this out. So I'm gonna hit Q and I'm gonna press this button here. And if we see a blue arrow inside of Fusion, we normally drag it up and there we, we have a block. Now, before I exit out of this, notice in the extrude command right here that you actually have a, uh, a taper angle over here. I bet you that there's some people uh, who's watching this who feel like they are fairly seasoned, but maybe never have noticed that this function is over there. This has actually always been there. And, um, you know, if you're a new user, if you just pay a little bit attention to what's going on over here, maybe slowing down a little bit, um, you will find that there is some cool functions over here. So, for example, if I type in minus 15, notice what happened to our model. We are getting a table, or as we'd like to call it, a draft on our model. You can always go back, right-click on the feature down here, edit the feature, and you could change that to maybe positive 15, and you will see that uh, that draft is now going the other way on all the faces. Now, what happens if you have a model that doesn't have any uh, taper on it, or you've got an extruded body, maybe it was imported from another software? Well, that is when we start calling it something different than taper. Now we call it drafts. And there is actually a draft feature under the modify sitting uh, right here. Now, draft normally comes from plastic injection molding, where you actually need a little bit of a taper on the part for it to come out of the steel mold. So let us select the draft, and you will see here that we get a neutral plane. Think of this, the 90 degree plane to your face. So if I select this top face here, I can now go and select faces. If I select this inner face and I grab this little handle, or I could also type it over here in the dialog box, you can see that I can start adding degrees to that. Now, you can also start adding other faces. So we might select this face here and this face here and then start moving that in and out. And we can add that angle, whatever you, whatever you want on that. Now, again, this is not just for plastic injection molding. Of course, uh, this could also work on you just want to add some kind of a taper to, to your part. Let me just go and delete that 
feature there, click on that and hit delete on your keyboard. And now we're back to everything being straight again. For the third option here, I'm going to rotate the model around. I'm going to start a new sketch and I'm going to use that sweep command by clicking on the back face. I'm going to hit alpha line and just draw a line from there up to here. Let's give it a dimension, D for dimension, and let's make it 15. And if I want to get these two other lines here, P for project, select just this line here and this line here and project those over to that sketch. Now, when we go to create, go to sweep, this profile will be that area in there. And if we select the path, you will see when we click on that, because Fusion sees that it's intersecting, it's going to be red. That means a cut. And now if I go around and I select that bottom edge of my path, you will see that it's going to go ahead and make that cut. Let's just stop that right there. Hit OK. And you will now see we got that 15 degrees all around there. So this is another way that we can, can add that taper to our part. So there was three of them. Now, sometimes life gets tough. Sometimes you get a part, maybe it's imported, and it can be a little bit difficult to add these tables on it. One thing to look out for is that Fusion don't like when the software kind of like will undercut itself. So there could be some issues if there was some radiuses in internal corners and, and so forth. Sometimes you got to just step it up a notch. And this is where maybe you would like the loft command. So let me just click these, delete those out of there, we're back to straight. Now, if I go all the way back and get rid of the solid two, let's just turn that sketch back on, our original sketch. The way we can do loft is that we can loft between two sketch entities. So if you've never seen the loft before, check out, check this out. I'm going to go ahead and create a construction offset plane from our original plane. Just bring that up. Maybe 120 is fine. And then now I have a plane sitting up here, up higher. And if I open up a sketch on that, it's so like that. I can use that project command you saw me using before. So maybe we just hit P for project. I'm just going to select this edge, this edge, and this edge. Hit OK. Now you will see that those lines are still Three lines are sitting up here, right? Let me hit P for project again and select these three lines. But now I'm going to hit O for offset. And just offset these out. Let's go 40 millimeters. And then if we hit alpha line, we can close it up with this from here to here. So we now have our original one down here and the top one up here that is offset out a little bit. If we're using the loft command, then we're going to select our original bottom and now our new top. And you will now see when I hit OK that now we get that development between those two sketch entities and that will give you that taper. So this is a really, really good option if you have something really complicated. The last example is a little bit out in left field and is really just one of those odd ones that you, that you might appreciate. So back to our original just extruded up part here. Nothing too fancy. Check this out. If we go ahead and create a new sketch, and um, I'm going to create that on the same plane as we did our original. I am going to hit project again. I really like projecting in this video. And I'm going to select those inner edges of our original component. And then I'm going to hit alpha line and close this rectangle off in a new sketch. I'm going to hit Q for press pull, select that inner one, drag it up. Now you will see that it gets merged together. That's because join is over here. What I'm going to go to is a new body. So I'm creating a new multi-body part. Like I said, this might get, um, you know, a little advanced if you are brand new, but just, just come with me here on this ride. So new body, hit OK. That means that now over in the bodies folder, there is two bodies over here. So if I turn off the one that we just created, we had the original. 
And if I turn on the original, then we have our new one. What is just a, uh, what is just a square? But what we can do, because these are separated as bodies, if we right click and we go in, we could either add a table right in here, like we did in, in the first scenario. We could do this, right? That was the first example we had where we add a table into it. And now if you use the combine tool, what well, is a little misleading, and we select the target body, what's well, going to be our first body. Our tool body is going to be that, that new body we created. And instead using cuts, then it's going to use that new body to cut that old body. Let me hit OK. And now you will see we have that, that taper in there. Now you might ask yourself, why would I go through all these troubles? Well, sometimes you actually have a male body that has all those features on it. Or maybe it was easier for you to visualize it and create it as a male component instead of internally into curves. And here you can use that combined cut function to actually add tapers, angles, or any other cool looking features. I hope that you found this video helpful. Don't forget, down in the description area of this video, you will find my email address. Don't hesitate, send me any future topics you would like to see. And also, while you're down there, click on Brad Taylor's uh, YouTube channel, check it out, subscribe, give him a thumbs up. It's absolutely awesome that he's starting these great, great live streams. Until the next time, I hope you have an awesome, awesome day. Take care, folks.